I'm going to share with you my most frequently asked questions on laser hair removal. The first question I usually get asked is how safe it is. Well, laser is very safe. The very first laser, the Ruby laser, was invented in 1960, so lasers and IPLs are on the market a very long time. Laser also emits what's known as non-ionizing radiation, which is entirely harmless, unlike the radiation that's emitted from x-rays, which is ionizing radiation, which is actually indeed harmful. I often get asked whether laser is safe during pregnancy, but there's never been any clinical studies on pregnant women having laser done. So unfortunately, we don't know how safe it is. So therefore, we don't treat pregnant women with laser. Some red-haired individuals often ask if they're suitable for laser because although their hair on their head is red, their body hairs are brown. But unfortunately, red-haired individuals have a different type of melanin known as pheomelanin. And this type of melanin does not respond to laser very well. So whilst a red-haired individual might have laser done, they may, might get somewhat of an improvement, but they will never get um, the kind of results that a dark-haired individual would get. And the same goes for blonde-haired individuals that are naturally blonde on their head, but they might have somewhat of dark hair on their bodies. They still also will not respond as well as a dark-haired individual to laser hair removal. Some clients ask whether a laser hair removal can be done within the eyebrow, on a human brow, and yes, it can be done. I've had laser hair removal on my eyebrows myself, and I've also had this section here on my eyebrows done. Laser hair removal will not shape your eyebrows to a really nice shape, so whilst it might get rid of the excess hair, it won't shape their eyebrows. For once you finish your course of laser hair removal in your brows, you will still need to tweed a nice shape into them. Some clients that suffer from ingrown hairs often wonder whether laser is an option for them, and they are an absolute ideal candidate for laser hair removal for months they have dark hairs, obviously, uh, to eradicate this problem, and it does get rid of it permanently. Another common question is how painful laser hair removal is. Now, certainly in my opinion, waxing is so much more painful than laser. The laser energy can be adjusted to your comfort level, so you shouldn't be in too much pain or discomfort, but you will certainly feel an element of heat and a little bit of discomfort. And what about lasers on the market that claim to be pain-free? But unfortunately, there's no such thing as a laser that's totally pain-free. The intensity level of every laser machine on the market can be increased or decreased to your comfort level. So clinics that proclaim to offer pain-free laser hair removal, they are simply reducing the energy intensity of the laser because there's simply no such thing. Many clients ask how many treatments that they'll require. Well, if you are an ideal candidate with dark hair, medium texture, not too fine, you will fall into the ideal category. So for a body area, let's say legs, bikini line or underarms in an ideal client with dark hair, that client will probably need between six and eight treatments to achieve 70 to 90% permanent hair reduction. Clients that are not ideal candidates that might have more lighter brown hair or uh, finer hair, uh, they won't respond as well and they might need more treatments. What's the difference between having a facial area like an upper lip or a chin area treated with laser versus a body area like underarms, skin line or legs? Well, there's a big difference. Body hair typically is a coarser, more medium textured hair, whereas facial hair is much finer and downier. So finer hair is more challenging to treat compared to the denser, coarser hair that's on the body. So therefore body areas won't need as many treatments as facial areas. Typically body areas will only need between six and eight treatments, whereas facial areas might need up to 10 treatments. And why is this? The laser hair removal machine emits light, and that light is attracted to pigment, which is the color in the hair. So a thicker hair will have more uh, melanin, more color in it, and a thinner hair will have less color in it. So it's less of a target for treating upper lip hair. So that's why it's more challenging to treat. So what about treating dark skin, like Asian skin, black skin? Well, for treating the darker skin types, the only safe laser to use on the darker skin types is an ND YAG laser. And this has a very long wavelength. The wavelength is 1064, 1064 nanometers. And that long wavelength will allow the laser light to penetrate very deep into the skin. By penetrating at a deeper level, it means that the laser light is bypassing the surface of the skin because the laser light is attracted to pigment. We want the pigment in the hair to pick up the laser light and not the pigment in the skin. Pigment is color, so the color in the skin can actually pick up the laser light and so can the color in the hair. So that's why we need a very long wavelength to bypass the surface of the skin, to safeguard the skin from burning and only target the laser light at the root of the hair follicle. So a, a long wavelength is the safest for treating dark Asian type skin 
and black skin. So for fe effective results, you need an ND YAG laser. The lasers with a shorter wavelength are not as safe for treating dark skin and also you have to use a very low energy setting so that you actually will safeguard the skin. So therefore, the shorter wavelengths for darker skin is really not that effective and not that safe either. Does my skin clinic treat dark skin and black skin? Yes, we do. We have the Cutera NDI Glazer, which is safe at treating black skin and Asian skin. So what if you've had laser or IPL uh, hair removal in another clinic and it didn't work? Well, the possibility is they might have had an underpowered laser or IPL system. We at my skin clinic use a class four medical grade laser uh, the brand we have is the Cutera laser. So it's a very high powered device. So uh, it's much more effective at getting results than the underpowered devices. So if you've had laser hair removal elsewhere and it didn't work, it's possibly that you might have been treated with an underpowered laser system. So what are the risks with having laser hair removal done? Well, we're using a laser which emits light, which turns into heat. So anytime you're treating uh, the skin with heat, the risk is burning the skin. And that's one of the reasons why you need a patch test before you embark on a laser hair removal procedure. So the energy that's used in the patch test is the same energy that will be used during your treatment. So what are the risks with laser hair removal? Well, because laser light transforms into heat in the skin, that heat could, uh, could potentially burn you if it was at too high of a setting for you. This is the reason why a patch test is absolutely necessary before you embark on a course of laser treatments. So the intensity delivered on the day that you come in for the patch test is the same intensity that's used during your course of treatments. As you progress through your course of treatments, we may do more patch tests so that we can increase the energy as you go along as the hairs thin out and you might need higher energies. But from once you have a patch test and you've had no issue with the patch test, you can proceed with the treatment very safely. You will need to inform your clinic if you're taking some medications. Some medications make you photosensitive to light, which therefore might increase your sensitivity to the laser light. So in order to prevent burning, you must inform us of any medications you're taking and maybe more patch tests throughout your course of treatment might be required. It's also necessary to refrain from wearing fake tan or having a fresh natural tan while you're having your course of laser hair removal treatments because the laser is absorbed into pigment, which is color. We don't want the color in the skin absorbing the laser light and burning the skin. We want the laser light absorbing right into the, to, to the hair follicle and destroying the hair follicle and not uh, damaging the surface of the skin. So therefore you can't wear fake tan when you're coming in for the laser treatment and you can't have an active fresh tan either. So does laser hair removal work and is it permanent? Well yes, laser hair removal does work. It's FDA approved for permanent hair reduction, so we know it's guaranteed to work. What are the factors that help it work more effectively? Number one, you must go to a reputable clinic that's offering a class 4 medical grade laser which is powerful and powerful enough to give the most effective results. Number two, you must go to a clinic that have very competent staff, competent staff that can use the laser to the best of its capacity and therefore getting the best results for you because there's no point having a Ferrari if you don't know how to drive it, it's the same as a laser. How does laser hair removal compare with electrolysis? Both of those systems are permanent hair removal systems. So electrolysis is ideal for small areas like upper lip and chin. Electrolysis is ideal for blonde hair, gray hair, maybe very fine hair, hairs that are not suitable for laser because electrolysis only works on one single hair at a time because a tiny probe is inserted into the hair follicle and the electrical current cuts off the blood supply to the root of the hair. That renders the hair loose in the follicle, which then in turn um, makes the hair permanently destroyed if it's in the active anagen stage. That's how electrolysis works. So it's slower, but electrolysis is FDA approved for permanent hair removal, whereas laser is FDA approved for permanent hair reduction. So you'll get more permanent results with electrolysis, but it's really only suitable for smaller areas because it can only work on one hair at a time but electrolysis is the, the only option for light colored hair like blonde, gray, red, because laser doesn't work on blonde, gray or red hairs because there's no pigment. So laser hair removal is ideal for body areas because it's really fast 
uh, it can treat lower legs in maybe 15 or 20 minutes. So laser is the ideal option for large areas and laser will only work on dark hairs. With laser, you only get permanent hair reduction only. So you'll get up to 90% reduction on, uh, let's say a body site um, after a course of treatments. You will still, after having laser done, have a few fluffy, um, light, fine, thin hairs. You will not have 100% permanent hair removal. So that's the difference between electrolysis and laser. They're both permanent, but you know, there are pros and cons of both. So how does laser hair removal compare with waxing? Well, waxing is just temporary. From once you wax an area, it'll grow back in four to six weeks again. Whereas with laser, after each individual treatment, you will have 10 to 15% permanent hair reduction in each individual treatment. You will not have that with, with waxing. You will be waxing forevermore. Whereas with laser, after your course of maybe six to eight treatments, you are permanently hair free. So can you pluck your hairs in between laser treatments? Absolutely not. We need a root present in order for the laser to work. So every time you come into us, we need the root of the hair there so that we can destroy it with the laser. If you've plucked the hair out, we can't treat it. So therefore you can't pluck or you can't wax hairs in between your treatments. However, you can shave them or trim them with a scissors as often as you wish. In fact, we usually ask clients to shave the area before they come in to have treatment. What if you're using retinol on the face, which is a vitamin A serum? Well, if you're using retinol on your face and you're coming in for laser hair removal, you must cease using retinol for two days before your treatment and you can resume using retinol two days later. What is the difference between an IPL system and a laser system? Well, a laser system is a more focused light and usually with a laser system, you have more parameters that you can adjust. With laser, you can adjust the length of heating time as well as the intensity. It's like you're putting your piece of meat into the oven for a specific period of time and at a particular temperature. With IPL, on the other hand, you don't have the option to uh, lengthen or shorten the heating time. You only have the option to increase the energy up or down. So whilst IPL is still very good, especially if it's a class four medical grade IPL, they're still very, very good. They are a little bit more limited than laser. Laser has the edge over IPL typically, but IPLs typically are faster at delivering uh, the procedure. The procedure doesn't take as long in the clinic. Some people with psoriasis ask if they can have laser hair removal done. Well, I personally have psoriasis and I've done laser hair removal over mine. But of course, if your psoriasis is very severe, we can't do it. But if it's not too widespread, we can certainly do laser hair removal around that area. I personally didn't find it uncomfortable when I had laser over mine. Can you have laser hair removal if you have PCOS? We have treated clients in the past with PCOS. It doesn't pose any problems, but the only uh, consideration is you may need more treatments and you may need ongoing maintenance because the PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, the hormones that are synonymous with that condition might be causing the hair growth. So if you have hormonal issues that are contributing to your hair growth issue, well then it might impede our results. But there have been clients that have been successfully treated with PCOS, so it's certainly worth a try, but we can't guarantee results in cases of hormonal uh, issues. Do you need to use numbing cream before you have laser hair removal done? Absolutely not. Laser is not that painful at all. It's far less painful than waxing. You will feel some heat, an element of discomfort, but it's certainly a very tolerable treatment and very worthwhile. And finally, is laser hair removal worth it? Well, in my opinion, laser hair removal is absolutely worth it. I've had laser hair removal done probably around 15 years ago. I have to say it's absolutely brilliant because I'm very dark, I have very coarse hairs, and uh, it's been a godsend for me. So personally, I find it well worth it, and you save a fortune in waxing bills. So I hope that summed up all your questions on laser hair removal. And patch testing for laser hair removal is absolutely free at my skin clinic.